Okay, today is the third day of probability. It's about tree diagrams. Let me show you quickly how you can set up a tree diagram to answer a complicated question. Let's say that this summer you get a chance to go to three different camps. One, of it, one is a computer programming camp, one is horse camp, and one is, uh, let's say, uh, paintball camp. And then if there's a 20% chance of this one, notice me putting that on the branch, and a 70% chance of that one, can you just logically tell me what the paintball would have to be? 10% chance because they have to add up to a total of 100. Each set of branches. Does that make sense to you? There's a 20% chance of this, a 70% chance of that, and a 10% chance of that. All right. Now, if you go to computer camp, they have three different languages that you could be assigned. You could be assigned uh, Java, or you could be assigned, oh, give me a computer language. C++. Uh, what's something else? Okay. HTML. Let's say that there is a 10% uh, chance you get on the uh, Java team. And there's a 30% uh, chance that you're on the CTT team, or C++ team. Uh, then that leaves 60% chance here. Again, those could have been decimals, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0.6. Now, what am I doing? In the end, if I asked, what's the probability that you're going to go to computer camp and be assigned into the HTML team? Well, then you just have to look down this path. You took this path. You went here, then you went here. And what do you do with probabilities? I told you this first day. You multiply them. You multiply probabilities. So 0.2 chance of this, there's only a 20% chance of that. And a 0.6 for that, what's 0.2 times 0.6? Well, 6 and 2 make 12. Would you agree with that? Then you've got to move the decimal over two spots. So 0 0.12, 6 times 2 would make 12. Move the decimal over two spots, which from here goes 0 0.12. What percent chance is that? So there's a 12% chance of that happening. If you're given the chart, it's really, really easy. A lot of times you have to make the chart from the words they tell you. I'd like you to finish my chart for the horse camp. I'll tell you verbally, and then you uh, finish it. On the horse camp, there's either jumping or hunting. Those are the two styles of horse that you could be in. And let's say it's a 50-50 chance of each. Jump or hunt. Then under paintball, we're going to keep it simple and make it offense and defense team. There are strategies in paintball about how to defend, so there's strategies about how to attack really fun. How many guys are playing paintball? Oh, lots of you. Okay. Um, the only thing that drove me crazy on paintball is that, you, that your mask was fogged up. Oh, so frustrating. But you wanted to keep it on because if anybody hits in the eyeball, you could lose your eye, so it's worth having the mask. Yes? Good question. Uh, let's make it a 50-50 just to keep our life a little simpler. Yes, sir. Interesting. Is it, so is it works? Yeah. Cool. Is there any downside to that? Seems like they should would make them all that way if. Well, I got shot in the mouth once. Okay. Because that only happened once. Okay. So if you get hit in the mesh. Interesting. All right. So, this was jump, this is hunt, 50, 50. This is, paintball is uh, 50, 50 for offense and defense. Okay, then, if I ask you any complicated sounding question, it's really easy. You just multiply the probabilities. Okay, so if I said, what's the probability you're going to end up on the offense team in paintball? Well, first, there's only a 10% chance you're going to be in paintball. 
but then there's a 50-50 chance of that. So then you go 0.1 times the 0.5, 1 times 5 is 5, move the decimal over a couple spots, 0 0.05, 5% 5 chance. Does that make sense? Okay, now what's also cool about these is that if you added up all the probabilities, it really makes sense. Because we know you're going to do one of these things, they all have to add up to 100%. If you add up all of these, they'll add up to 100%. Now, if they're off like a percent, it'll be because of rounding. But if you added up everything that could happen, that will add up to 100% chance. Now, really, we should have probably included at the beginning a probability that you would do none of these, like all of the camps were going to fall through this summer. But we went under the assumption that you've been promised by your parents they're going to send you to one of these camps, and then it's just a matter of, how expensive they are and probability of being accepted or whatever. Okay, one more thing. What if I said or? Should that make the answer bigger or smaller? Bigger. Automatically you should know it's bigger. Okay, and that's like what's the probability of being on an offense team in paintball, which is like one of your favorite options, or being on the HTML team at computer camp? Well, and these are the two things, and I just said or, so what does that mean? Add them. 12% and 5% makes there's a 17% chance that one of those things is going to happen. What's the probability that I will be at horse camp? 70%. Do I even need to go to these guys? No. Okay, what if I said it this way? What's the probability I'll be at the jump school at horse camp? Point three five. Is that what you got? Okay, good. What's the probability that I will not be at jump school at horse camp? Do you really want to take all the rest of them, add them all up? And there's a better way. If the probability of me being at horse jump camp is 0.35, what's the other answer? 0.65. Because if probability of doing something is 35%, then the probability of not doing that thing must be the other part, the part that adds together to make it 100%. Okay. I think I've taught you as much as you need to know, and so we have to be short in lesson today, so let's move. Um, next thing, grab your homework that's that's assigned for today. Not, not the one that I had you do last night, but the one I'm assigning. And that's right here, tree diagrams. And, oh wait, I wanted to give it to you on paper. Hold that thought. So, why? Because uh, one of our teachers was, this is a really good thing. You've probably heard this before, that unless somebody walks in your shoes, they don't really understand. Well, the teacher had to do this assignment on an iPad with a student and they were like oh my gosh for this one drawing these trees is such a pain on the iPad so we don't want to use the iPad it's a good tool but it's not a good tool for everything so in this case trying to draw really into charts you'll be a lot better off on paper the iPads will get better and better over time as far as being able to draw really fine you know lines and stuff but right now you'll be happy we made copies for you so, here's your worksheet for tonight. I'm going to pause for a second while we get into that. All right, so here we go. Got it up on the screen here. And the first question is about independent and dependent. And then it's going to say draw a tree diagram of the situation. All right, independent events. I flip a coin. I flip the coin again. Do those depend on each other? Really, it comes down to, did the first event affect the other one? So if I flip two coins, they're independent. On a deck of cards, it can go both ways. Let me show you an example. All right, so if I have a deck of cards right here, my jumbo playing cards, so you can see them better. Um, if I say, pick a card, any card, what's the probability he's going to get a queen? How many queens are there in a deck? four, four queens, and there was a four in 52 chance that he was going to get a queen. 
Now, if he keeps that, he got he picked he picked a four, so it wasn't a queen, obviously. So now, do you get his chances are different? Not a lot different, but there's still four in there, but there's not 52 cards. There's only 51. Do you see how it's going to change each time? You see how the one probability depends on the previous one? Because if he had already gotten a queen, then there'd only be three queens left in the deck. So it depends. Now, what if I take this card he picked out and I put it back in the deck and I say, pick again. Do you get how that made it independent? Because now what he gets, try again. And he did not get a queen. He got an ace, though. That's a pretty good card. Anyway, the probability didn't uh, have anything to do with the previous one because we had replaced the card. So it all depends on are you replacing or not. So it says in this problem, you do not replace the first card. If you don't replace it, didn't the check just change? Yeah, it went from 52 card deck down to 51 card deck. All right, now I know this is always a thing for people uh, that are not into cards. I need to, for, for those of you that are not into cards, I need you to get uh, this part. There are 13 clubs, 13 spades, 13 hearts, and 13 diamonds. Those are the four kinds of cards you can have in the deck, like the flavors, so to speak. And then within every set of 13 cards, like the 13 cards, or, or let's say the spades for in this case, the 13 uh, spades, there's an ace, king, queen, jack, and those are called the face cards. And then there's the numbers 2 through 10. There's no 1 in the deck. The 1 is kind of like the ace. Okay. So if you are not a card person, you should probably write this down. Ace, king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. That's the 13 cards. So there's four kings in the deck. One is spades, one's hearts, one's diamonds, one's clubs. Okay, you got to get what the deck is made up of before you have a chance of doing this problem. Yes? Good question. You're right that there are, there are red cards and there are black cards, but in this particular problem, uh, we don't have to, like, they don't care that there's red and black. But you're right, the black ones are the clubs and the spades, and the red ones are the hearts and the diamonds. Okay, so draw a tree diagram of this situation. We're supposed to be choosing two cards one at a time from a deck of 52 cards. All right, well, you know there's 52 cards. Do you really want to draw 52 lines here? I think you'd go insane. That would be a really intense tree diagram. You could actually do it, but not what we're looking for. Yes? Well, that's, that's the point of drawing the table, is there's a lot of things that could possibly have been first. All right. So, um, try a tree diagram of the situation. We can draw it from the perspective of uh, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. And since that's the way they referenced it, we're going to draw it that way, and I'm going to see what other questions they're going to ask. See how they're asking about probability of drawing out hearts? At least one of the cards is a heart. So that implies that the way they want the uh, tree diagram drawn has to do with clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. Again, we could make a tree that has 52 different cards on it, but that's the hard way, and we would never make you do something that intense. So there's four branches on your first part of the tree. Now make it big. I mean, that's why we, we gave you a lot of space on your, uh, you don't want to scrunch this all in. This can fill up the whole space that you have. And this is your clubs, spades, hearts, or diamonds. Can you abbreviate? Absolutely. I would, I would abbreviate. Now think about this. There are, what's the probability that I should put right here? Now I don't have it like uh, necessarily a requirement it has to be a decimal. It is the cleanest and easiest, but yes? Yeah, it is 0.25. It's one-fourth of the deck, right? Now, could I have got that by going 13 out of 52? Yeah, but guess what you get when you take 13 out of 52? 0.25. Now, I'm going to actually do it as 13 over 52. And then I'm going to put these hash marks. 
you get that that means that they're all the same. And it's just a lot easier to draw. They're all 13 out of 52 chance. Okay. Now, why am I sticking with 13 out of 52 instead of the decimal? Because as soon as we go here, do you get I have to change my probabilities? It's not 13 out of 52 anymore. Because somebody asked me, how do you know which card you got? You have to set up a chart that shows you. So if I went down this road, think about it. What did I get if I went down this road? If I got this, if this is the thing that happened, what did I get? A club. Therefore, it's still clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. But the probability of getting a club has changed because we already got a club. So now what's the probability of getting the second club? It's not 13 anymore. It's 12 out of, it's not 52 anymore. Out of 51. And unfortunately, not all the rest of the numbers aren't the same. We have to do each one. Spades. Now, there's still 13 spades because we didn't get a spade. We got a club when we're going down this road. Okay, so this one's 13 spades are left, but there's still 51 cards. And isn't that going to be the same for the hearts and the diamonds? I'm okay with you doing this thing. Yes. Okay, I'm going to get there in a minute. Let me let me just like show people what, where we have to go for each of these now. Okay. So now the spades. There's four things that could happen if I drew a spade. The next card could either be a club, spade, heart, or diamond again. You see why this would be incredibly painful to do on an iPad? Just to be able to squeeze all of these in. It's going to be hard enough for me to do on the smart board. All right. Clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. Now, it's really not that hard now. We can kind of replicate what happened before. For clubs, there's still 13 and 51. For spades, we got a spade if we're going down this road. So that means there's only 12 out of 51 chance. And the other two are 13 out of 51. Now they're going to ask you some questions like, what's the probability then, now that you've drawn the chart, that you got a club and then a heart? And you'll have to go, okay, well, that's down this road. This road was the club road, and this road is the heart road. And I'd have to multiply probabilities. So I got to take 13 out of 52 and times it by the heart. And the heart one was 13 out of 51. There's my probability of getting a club and then a heart. Does that make sense to you? Here's the, here's the club part. Here's the heart part. And I multiply them. All right. Now, let's move on to part B. I don't want to have to, like, scroll this down because I don't want to lose my whole chart. Uh, part C, actually. What is the probability you draw two hearts? Do you get that that means I'm going to go down? Two hearts. I'm going to go down this road which was 13 out of 52. And then I'm going to go down the heart road. I got clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. I'm going to go heart and then heart. I got to figure out those two and then multiply them. Part D. What's the probability at least one of the cards is a heart? So some, assuming here you drew two, two cards. Okay, that's different. If at least one is a heart, at least one, I got to look at all the combos and figure out which ones would work for me. Remember how I said you often have to go back to the definitions of probability? It's what I want over what's possible. All of these things are what's possible. That and that and that and that and that and that. These are all the things at the end that could have happened. 
Okay, what I got to do is figure out how many different things were possible and then which of them would make me win. So which of these have a heart in them? This one does. This one does. It's got a heart, an H in it. All four of these do. All the heart ones, obviously, because they got a heart at the beginning, so they have at least one heart. And then under diamonds, there's going to be one of those. Clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds, and it's that guy right there. All of those are the things that I want. Those are the probabilities I'm looking for. Okay? So what's the probability? At least one is a heart. You add up. Remember, it's this one. It's kind of like saying, I win if I get this one or this one or this one or this one. And what do you do with ors? Add them. So you find this one and you add it to this one and you add it to this one and this one and this one and this one. They all had hearts. And then you add it to that one. And if you win, if you get that or that or that or that or that. And you add those together. All right. I know that's kind of intense. Uh, you have two more like this to do when you're done. I want to help you with the sock one next. Okay, everybody get to the sock problem. Is it independent or dependent? And that depends on does the one probability affect the other one? Okay, you pick two socks, one at a time, without replacing them. If you take a sock out of your collection, didn't you just change your probabilities on the next one? So unless you replace it, you have just made the one depend on the other. So that one is a dependent. Draw a tree diagram. Okay, so got six white, eight black. I got to just go white, black, and red. This one's not going to be nearly so nasty as the last one for drawing the chart. You pick two socks one at a time without replacing them. Now, I know it seems like when I say pick two socks that you, know, you could do it all with one chart. But the first sock is here. This is your first sock. Your second sock has to be here. You need to understand on tree diagrams, it's sort of like this whole area, that's your first pick. This column right here, that's your second pick. First sock, second sock. All right. You don't have to draw all that in there. I'm just trying to say that they are kind of a vertical thing. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to do my probabilities. What's the probability of a white? Well, how many are there that I want? Six. Out of how many are there? Total. Six and eight and four. Is that 18? Okay. So, six out of 18 chance of a white. Black ones, eight out of 18. Don't need to reduce. Don't worry about that. Uh, and, and the test, we'd want you to reduce. But red. Red is four out of 18. Now, for whites. The white sock road, this one right here, that means that white, black, red, I already got a white, so I don't have six anymore. I have five white socks now to pick from. Out of, I don't have 18 socks, I have 17 socks. Five out of 17. For black, it's, let me think, how many black socks were there? And I, It was eight out of 17, etc. Alright, that's all I have for you for today.